Generation attacks, how we can generate the adverse examples to full uh, model. Okay, uh, the time, okay, uh, the first attacks that we have um, and also so famous uh, in the evasion attacks or exploratory, we know based on the gradient and base, okay. I mean that this, uh, uh, this timeline shows a different kind of attacks uh, that we can consider uh, based on the gradient one. For example, in 2014, the researchers uh, considered the gradient-based attacks uh, I mean that in 2014 that they call G uh, D. I mean that GD means that the gradient descent uh, attack. Okay. Then again in 2014, other researchers they consider the gradient based attacks. Uh, I mean that against the deep neural networks. Okay, this is one of the famous adverse examples. We yes, I mean that deal. Then in 2015. Uh, another strategy that the uh, that researchers consider uh, is that based on the adversarial initialization, and then uh, in 2015, uh, uh, okay, after the gradient base, another researchers uh, they propose a, an interesting type of attacks, fast gradient sign method attack (FGSM). Okay, uh, that the researchers applied uh, this type of attack against the deep neural uh, network. Again, in 2015, uh, other attacker, uh, 2016, other uh, researchers uh, applied the, uh, another adversarial uh, attacks and they proposed a method based on the deep pool. We know this attack deep pool. Uh, this is uh, one of the sparse attacks against the deep neural network. Again, 2016, the researchers uh, proposed another uh, type of attack uh, based on the JSMA, Jacobian silencing map attack. And also they, <clears throat> they proposed a one defense strategy here. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, 2017, another attacker, uh, another research and they proposed a BIM uh, iterative fast green sign map attack. Until now, uh, we have a different kind of attacks. <clears throat> Then uh, we have a different kind of uh, uh, libraries that you can consider for applying a different kind of adversary attacks during the training or during the testing phase. Uh, one of them is a full box. This is a library. This is one of the famous library that you can apply to the adversary attacks during testing phase. Security ML, this is a uh, interesting uh, 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 library that you can consider for the different kind of attacks during the testing and during the training and also defense. Clever Hands, this is another uh, interesting library uh, that you can consider for applying uh, different kind of attacks during the testing phase and also other uh, libraries that we have nowadays uh, from the different uh, laboratories that you can consider for applying different kind of adversary attacks during the testing and also during the training phase as well. And some of the libraries also you can find a different kind of defense strategy. Uh, let's go to talk about the first attack that the researchers proposed. Uh, I mean that in 2013, okay, based on the gradient descent with the kernel density estimation. Okay, uh, the idea of the gradient was, uh, you know that the idea of the gradient uh, was attacking uh, to the classifier because you know that most of the classifiers, all of them, they train based on the gradient, okay? Uh, in 2013, the first gradient attack proposed uh, and uh, and then tested against the shallow network. I mean, that, not the network, shallow model, because on that time there is no any deep learning model. Uh, therefore, uh, the first gradient attack proposed uh, against the, uh, I mean, that machine learning model, such as a support vector machine. Therefore, and they tested against a shadow model. I mean that some things uh, in the, uh, I mean that in the linear, as you know that the deep learning, uh, some things about the nonlinear model. Okay, therefore, they applied in the linear model, uh, in the machine learning. Okay, and also afterward they move, they uh, try to improve the performance of this attack, and afterward they applied into nonlinear classifiers. 
Okay, uh, as you know that here, imagine that in the circle, we have a different um, samples is manipulate. I mean, that is a manipulate area. And the blue one is a, a area of the related to the pristine one and the samples here completely pristine. Therefore, the main job for the attacker is to transfer uh, manipulate uh, samples to the uh, pristine sample, uh, pristine area. I mean, that from the red to blue. That, uh, that we call uh, adversarial example, that is a reach to the misclassification error. Okay, uh, uh, some things that are important that they applied into the shallow model first in 2013 in the gradient descent, okay? And they consider a different uh, kind of uh, norms based on the, okay, this is not the P1 and P2, this is the L1 and L2, please uh, remember that. This is L1 and L2. I mean that L1 norm and L1 and L2 norms. Okay. Therefore, they attack. They try to attacking the binary classifiers. Okay, zero and one. Uh, I mean that here, for example, the red one is a class zero and blue one is a class of one or vice versa. It's up to you. And either uh, linear uh, or with the kernels. Okay, uh, for the uh, machine learning model. Okay, and they apply the perturbation. Uh, based on the different kind of um, uh, norms, L1 and L2 in this uh, in this part. Okay, therefore the perturbation can be uh, based on the L1 and L2. Uh, the starting point uh, of such uh, optimization, because you know that uh, this is an optimization strategy based on the L1 and L2 in the gradient part. Therefore the starting point of the such optimization and uh, based on the such optimization. And uh, we want to find uh, uh, which one of the point here, okay, can move or travel from the area of the manipulate to the area of the pristine. I mean that from the one class to other class, in this case, based on the uh, different norms, uh, optimization strategy. Okay. Therefore, uh, in the mathematics equation, some things that they applied here, uh, uh, this is something is the mathematics equation for the gradient part. Okay, uh, here the lambda divided by n and sum k x and uh, x minus x i divided by h. Okay, this part of the mathematics equation here shows that the, uh, I mean that some things that we can add a density estimator. This is something re related to the density estimator. That is uh, this this quantity here uh, uh, related to the kernel function. Okay. Okay. Therefore, uh, if you want that the these uh, points from the red one uh, travel to the blue one, okay. I mean that you want to find uh, which one of the uh, point here in this area uh, or in this uh, space. Uh, can go to the other class. Therefore, they applied this mathematics equation, and that is the some things that we know as density, I mean, the density estimator. Okay. Then uh, here, uh, uh, okay. And then uh, some things, uh, another strategy for the gradient attack, okay, is that we know as an iterative steps of gradient. Okay, GD, that we know as a gradient descent, KDE, okay. Therefore, how the researchers in the previous slide, okay, they try to build a gradient descent attack, okay. As we know, okay, uh, gradient uh, attack, we should to consider some things iteratively, okay. Imagine that this sample, this is samples that we want to move in the area of the uh, pristine blue one, okay. This sample in the red one, and I mean that uh, in the space of the uh, in the space of the red manipulate one, and we want to apply the attack to this sample and try to uh, tr uh, transfer or move these samples to the blue area. Okay, some things. This is very important that you should to consider the uh, the constraint. Okay, the constraint area. Therefore, uh, always in the optimization, it's very interesting to uh, first you should to consider a constraint area. I mean that the constraint area shows that uh, the uh, samples should move inside this. Uh, I mean that area should move inside this constraint, 
And whenever I uh, reach to the end of this constraint, I mean that the algorithm try to stop, okay, and we tell you this is the adversity attacks or not, okay? Therefore, consider, the, uh, consider a constraint is one of the steps that you should to consider for the gradient descent attack. Therefore, consider one point in the space, I mean that here, and we want the we want in this point to reach to the other uh, class. I mean that for the blue one. Okay. Therefore, uh, you, you should to compute a gradient first. Okay, and keep it iteratively. Okay, compute the gradient here to here. Then the uh, you know that the uh, uh, the sample start to move based on the gradient. Then this is iteratively that you should to compute a gradient from this point to this point. This is another gradient. Another gradient also here, okay? Then uh, since you reach to the constraint, the algorithm will stop, okay? Then, okay, for example, you have one sample, okay? That the, that you apply the gradient uh, iteratively here. Okay, sorry, uh, I want to know that my micro is on. Okay. Uh, therefore, uh, okay. Whenever you apply the gradient iteratively and the move and the sample start to move until it reach to the constraint here, based on the mathematics equation that I told you in the previous previous slide here, then uh, then here, for example, you have one uh, one example. Okay. For example, imagine that you have a, a image or something here. Okay. Okay, then you will start to test your model, okay, that with this, this point, with this example, and try to understand the behavior of the model. Okay, okay, let's see, uh, let's focus that, okay, our constraints that we consider something same as this circle and some part of the circle in the blue one and some part of the circle in the red one. Okay, now uh, that the sample uh, try to move uh, so perfect in this area and reach to the blue one and reach to the end of the constraint and start now we have a, a sample that we call adversary example in this case. Okay, uh, therefore, uh, what is it again to, for the, uh, if you want to repeat uh, the constraint means that here the constraint means uh, uh, the shows that the maximum perturbation what is the maximum perturbation here? As I told you, if you remember that I told you we have a, a perturbation that you should to add to the sample, okay? But how much the perturbation that you should consider? Okay, this constraint area shows that how much that you should to apply the perturbation to the sample. Okay, you apply the gradient here and it's iteratively. And for example, you up, I mean that, you a small a small you apply the small perturbation to the sample, then another perturbation here. You try to increase again in gradient and iteratively until reach to the maximum perturbation. Here the the end uh, part of the uh, constraint shows that the maximum perturbation. Therefore, here the constraint area shows that shows shows that uh, a maximum perturbation that you should to apply uh, to the point. In fact, we don't want to consider the infinity, okay? Uh, infinity constraint. Why? Because if you consider the constraint infinity here, uh, imagine that uh, you put, uh, I mean, that your circle something so big until to end, okay? Maybe you or your circle moves to the end, to the here, okay? What's happened? Which means that you apply the very maximum perturbation to the sample. What does it mean? Which means that you have lots of noise to. It's true that you uh, that you fool a detector with this uh, with this um, a strategy, okay? But you have lots of noise inside this uh, sample. Therefore, you should to consider some things uh, same as this, not same as this, just uh, not so too much big, okay? Uh, because you should to control a maximum perturbation. Therefore, this is so important. Therefore, if you consider uh, if you consider the constraint so big in this area, something same as this circle, okay, what's happened? This maybe uh, your uh, sample uh, completely destroy. Okay, here. 
uh, in 2015, other researchers, uh, they applied, they proposed another strategy uh, in the adversary attacks based on the adversarial initialization. Okay, let's to find a good initialization of the point. Okay, I mean that this point or maybe this point, I mean that we should to find a good initialization for this point uh, regarding this point. I mean that in, instead of uh, starting from the red core in a red class, okay, uh, I mean that instead of the starting from the red class, red class means that the manipulate one and the blue one is the pristine area. Okay, for the adversary initialization case, let's start, in, instead of starting from the red, uh, red class, we start, okay, here, uh, I mean that uh, we start from the blue class and uh, uh, the blue cla and class, we try to find a boundary, okay? Therefore, uh, with the blue samples under I mean, the pristine, we try to find a boundary in this case. This is very interesting attack. So, uh, I mean that the blue sample here, when the blue uh, samples, I mean that the pristine bond start to move and reach to this area, I mean that to the boundary of the uh, manipulate one, okay? Uh, this point, this is a point that we want to uh, reach, okay? Uh, I mean that uh, uh, we want to reach, then we would like to transfer the red one to the blue one. Okay, with this point, we, uh, we find the uh, boundary, okay, then, What's happened to the uh, red one? Okay, then uh, we back and and then uh, we go to the uh, red one. Okay, here red one, uh, and uh, then starting start to apply the attack to the red one. Since we know that where is the boundary, since we know now where is the boundary, because we find the boundary based on the pristine samples. Now we know that how much that we should to move. Okay, and how much that we should to apply the perturbation to the sample. This is very interesting uh, type of attack that researchers applied in 2015, okay? Therefore, uh, the blue sample that we find, uh, we can find uh, based on the uh, optimization problem. And then we use a uh, gradient descent uh, for applying the attack to the red one that goes to the area of the blue one based on the gradient descent attack. Okay, uh, then uh, the previous uh, examples, some things that the researchers proposed in the uh, machine learning based, I mean, that the linear classifier. Now in 2014, I mean, that researchers uh, applied uh, the attack uh, to the neural network. Therefore, in 2014, the first adversary attacks against the uh, adverse, uh, against the deep neural network was proposed in 2014. Uh, to 2014, okay? Uh, because the uh, researchers uh, in the cybersecurity are interested to know uh, about the uh, deep learning behaviors, okay, in this case. Therefore, uh, uh, they transfer mo uh, the uh, knowledge that they catch during the machine learning phase, and they transfer this knowledge to the deep, deep neural network in the nonlinear classifier to see how the deep learning behaves. Okay, as you know that they compute, uh, I mean that here uh, in these images, uh, as you can see, this is a perturbation here, uh, perturbation that they should apply to the uh, sample, I mean that to the input image. And then uh, there is an output image that is consists of the image with uh, the perturbation one. Uh, okay. Okay, therefore in 2015, okay, uh, the first strategy that is applied, that is proposed by the researchers here, I mean that for finding, a, um, I mean that the perturbation, okay, they find the perturbation for sure based on the gradient. Okay, then afterward they, uh, they uh, propose a new type of attacks in 2015 based on the fast gradient sign method that also you know uh, as a FGSM. Okay, FGSM, this is the uh, first type of attacks that is proposed in 2015. Okay, the intuition, the intuition uh, regarding this type of attack, they use a gradient and try to, and, and trying to misclassification 
uh, error happens in the detector. Okay. Okay. This is a uh, first of all, there is no any uh, uh, iteration uh, in the in this type of attack. Okay. As you as you know, this is a fast screen sign attack. Uh, this is only one step of attack. There is no any steps or iterations uh, for finding a gradient. Therefore, they applied only one step attack. This is a single step attack. <clears throat> and uh, as I told you, this is not iteratively uh, attack. The perturbation here uh, in this uh, in this formula, okay, that they, they propose the perturbation uh, controlled by the epsilon here, okay, uh, and uh, uh, and um, they try to multiply this epsilon by the sign of the gradient, okay. Therefore, we have epsilon here shows that the strength of the attack factor or a perturbation. And here, the sign of the this part shows that the uh, sign of the gradient here. Therefore, sign here, uh, this is something that uh, sounds interesting to know how this sign comes from. Okay. Therefore, in the next slide, we find that uh, this sign shows exactly what thing and how we can find the sign of the uh, attack in this case, I mean, that sign of the gradient. Uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, let's start to think about uh, how uh, norms works. Okay, if you remember that, I told you a different type of attacks, they consider, the researchers, uh, they consider different kind of norms, L1, L2, L infinity, for a different type of attacks. Uh, for example, uh, as I told you, if you remember that um, for this type of attack gradient descent with the kernel density estimation, the, uh, the adversaries here, they, they consider L1 and also L2. This is not P1 and P2, this is L1 and L2. And also for this type of attack, for example, adversarial initialization here, the, adversar the adversaries or I mean that researchers that they, they try to generate the adverse examples, they the L1 and also L2 norms in this uh, for this type of attack. Okay, now uh, it's very interesting to know. Okay, uh, what is the norm here means? Okay, how norm works? Some things norms related to the optimization strategy. Okay, uh, the the people in FGSN and the people in FGSN, the people I mean that they propose the fast screen design method. And they used a uh, L infinity. Okay, therefore here, this type of attacks here works based on the L infinity in compared than the previous attack that works based on the L1 and L2. Okay, the people in FGSM, they use the L infinity norm because they wanted to introduce a global modification, okay, in the uh, part of the, for example, sample or image, because this, this type of attacks affect to the global to the global part. I mean that uh, this type of attacks affects to the all part of the, I mean that pixels, if you have image into the pixels and so on. Okay, we call it a global. Okay. Uh, therefore, if we consider the L infinity, okay, as a one norm in the fast gradient sign method attack, okay, this uh, uh, type of norm try to change at least all the pixels, uh, all the pixels, but based on the epsilon. Therefore, the L infinity try to change the all pixels, and based on the parameter epsilon, we will understand how much the pixels should to change. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, and uh, this is something that is works also based on the sign of the gradient, uh, sign uh, of the gradient. Okay, uh, what is the main difference between the L1, L2, and uh, L infinity? Okay, uh, imagine that this box shows that the shows that the constraint, okay? Therefore, as you can see, the L1 norm constraint, this is something same as this, okay? This is a very small area. Then if you consider the L2 norm con constraint, this is something bigger than the first one, but this is a circle. Therefore, if you have a circle area, I mean, that constraint, you can move your sample so easily to other part of the uh, circle, okay? And then uh, L infinity norm constraint, we have a very big area here, very big area than the other constraint. 
and your uh, sample can move to, to everywhere uh, in this in this uh, type of attack. Okay, how we can find uh, the size of the constraint in this box? Okay, the size of this box based on the epsilon. The first epsilon shows that how much the size of the constraint here should be. Okay, therefore, if you consider the YV set here, if we consider uh, epsilon with the big number, if you remember that 0 0.1 or 0 0.7 big number means that you have a big area, okay? Therefore, since your, uh, I mean that your sample can move a lot inside this constraint, okay? Therefore, we have uh, lots of modifications inside the pixel, okay? But imagine that if you consider the epsilon so small, for example, with the area 0 0.01, 0 0.01, this is a very small uh, epsilon. Therefore, the L, uh, L infinity box is so small. Therefore, you, the, uh, the sample read that you want to uh, apply the attack and transfer to the other area. These samples should to move inside the small area. Therefore, only the, uh, I mean, that only the few pixels may be changed, okay, in this part. Therefore, the epsilon shows that, uh, shows that how much, how much the constraint size should be, okay? And in this case, uh, uh, you can control your, uh, I mean, that the samples move a lot or just a little bit. Okay, as I told you, the fast gradient sign method attack, this is some things that works based on the L infinity norm that, that you can apply this type of attack uh, in the global part. I mean, that this is a, I mean, that the global perturbation, as you can see, this is something, a perturbation, and this is something global. And we find this type of perturbation based on the epsilon sign a gradient uh, 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 formula based on this infinity in uh, infinity l infinity norm constraint that leads to this perturbation okay uh, something uh, interesting is that if you consider this type of uh, um, adversarial perturbation into the original image okay this is a token uh, that the 67 confidence i mean that we detect this is token uh, with the 67 accuracy for example this is not too much but if you apply this perturbation to this image, okay, then you can fool a detector. And the detector says that this is an orange and uh, detector said 90, 80% confidence. This is an orange sample. But in fact, this is not the orange sample because we uh, fool a detector in this case. Okay. Uh, the important uh, part for the perturbation is that for the Adversary attack, when you want to generate any kind of adversarial attack, always the numbers inside the adversarial examples, okay? I mean, that the range of the numbers. If you know that the uh, pixels always between zero and 255, okay? But something that's interesting that you should to know is that always the numbers inside the adversary example here uh, between then uh, between zero and one, okay. And the number between the zero and one uh, will be changed based on the number of epsilon. Therefore, if you consider uh, epsilon so big number, for example, uh, I mean that uh, zero point nine. This is a very big number. Since the adversarial example numbers, okay, if each pixel sh should be between the zero and one but most of the pixels numbers goes to the big number. I mean, that maybe something's close to the one. And if you should, if you consider the epsilon number so, so small, close to zero, okay, uh, since this is a global perturbation, uh, the numbers uh, in the pixels between zero and one, the numbers become so close to the zero, okay? And this is the reason that sometimes we have a, a, a one perturbation image, okay? That is, there's lots of noise inside. And sometimes, no, we have uh, some things, uh, just a little bit noise inside the perturbation. Why? Based on the epsilon, because epsilon shows that the strange of the attacks that can affect to the pixels, that the pixels numbers between zero and one. Therefore, always the numbers uh, in the perturbation in here, 
completely based on the uh, floating point, not the integer number. Okay, another interesting part after the fast gradient sign method here, uh, I mean that in this type of attack that the researchers propose uh, here, okay, based on the L infinity norm, okay, against the, uh, the, attack, the researchers improved the performance uh, regarding this type of attack, but uh, they called uh, BIM or uh, also PGD. This is an iterative version of the fast gradient sign method that also you, uh, most of the researchers knows as a uh, IFGSM, okay. The problem, uh, the main problem for the fast gradient sign method attack is not iterative. And you have, uh, and you have only one step, okay, and, uh, and uh, as you know, whenever you have a one step attack, one step for the attack, sometimes, uh, and also it depends to the which kind of uh, constraint that you can imagine that you consider the uh, L infinity. Okay, imagine that you consider the L infinity and you have a fast clearing sign method attack. Okay, since you have a one step attack, okay, therefore you're, you're, uh, you, in your gradient uh, descent, you have only one step. Okay, I mean, only one line. Therefore, uh, maybe uh, if you consider this uh, area of the on um, that constraint so small, okay, uh, I mean that all of these constraints inside the red one, okay, your, your sample is, uh, uh, I mean that moved, okay, but it, it will reach to the red area again, red space again. Therefore, here it's so important that we consider uh, constraint so big here, area, I mean that L infinity. And uh, with the gradient uh, part, we expect that we consider the iterative version uh, because in the iterative version, we can find how the samples uh, moves, okay? Therefore, this is very interesting. For example, these samples move from to here to here, then sample from moved from here to here, then sample from moved to here to here, okay? And then, as soon as the sample cross the border, we find the adversity example and uh, we can stop the code based on the maximum perturbation based on the L, L infinity uh, constraint area. Uh, but for example, if you have one step attack, I mean that fast green sign method, okay, maybe uh, your um, a sample moves from to here and it's a stop because when there is no any iterations. Therefore, uh, the researchers uh, try to solve this problem uh, by applying the iterative version of the fast gradient uh, method. Therefore, this point, uh, I mean that in the red one here, imagine that, I mean, at this point that is in the manipulate area, okay, this point uh, enclosed uh, in the box, okay, in this box, um, uh, that is that is in, enclosed in this box and also enclosed in this box. Okay, uh, imagine that this is before. This is a fast screen sign method. Now we have an iterative one. Now uh, uh, the uh, sample can move uh, between a different uh, box and tr uh, and try to find uh, uh, other class space. Okay, therefore, uh, for the fast screen sign method iterative version, okay, you should apply the iterative uh, version in the gradient part. And also you should to consider the L infinity norm, okay? I mean that big, I mean that big space that, you, that your uh, sample can move uh, easily and find the correct part of the space. And also something that that is that you like, uh, you would like to have a, a maximum perturbation here inside a box. Again, let's go to the another type of attacks. Okay, uh, based on the gradient one, but the attack and but the researchers uh, uh, said uh, deep pool one. Okay, they call this type of attacks as a deep pool one. This is a very interesting type of attack. We want to reduce, I mean, that in this part, okay, it's true that you move your samples to the other area, but the problem is that if you consider the uh, epsilon with the big number, it's true that you find the, uh, I mean, that the adverse example, but inside the adverse examples, maybe you have a high perturbation. 
Okay, therefore, in the deep pool one, something that, uh, that is very important for us, we want to reduce, we want to reduce the perturbation, okay? And also, uh, this is one thing that we would like to have. For example, we would like to have uh, one attack sample or one address example that the perturbation inside the image, I mean, that not so obvious, okay, not so obvious. And also, uh, uh, you know, that uh, we don't like to uh, consider L infinity in this case. Why? Because in the L infinity, okay, L, 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 L infinity is so, so uh, costly. First of all, and since you have an area, big area, okay, you, your sample can move into the many part of this uh, constraint and this is reached to the maximum perturbation. Therefore, we don't like to consider the L infinity. Therefore, the researchers in the deep pool, they consider the L2 norm, right, and to consider the L infinity uh, in this case. Okay. Uh, deep pool, uh, they're taking the linear approximation. This is some things that they consider and then compute a gradient uh, based on the L2 norm here. Okay. Uh, and you can see here in uh, inside this example for the FGSM, we have a high perturbation, but in the deep pool, okay, we have a few perturbation inside this image, for example, which, which part of the, uh, I mean, that pixels is so important and uh, uh, we should to change, okay? And other pixels here, not so important, and we should we keep as a black uh, uh, pixels, okay? Therefore, we try to find the uh, important uh, pixels, and we try to change. Therefore, we have a perturbation only in this part in compared with the fast gradient sign method. Therefore, we have one image with a few uh, perturbation, okay? Um, because you reduce a perturbation, as, as I told you uh, here, uh, and also uh, why you have a, a few perturbation, because you change a norm from the L infinity to L2 norm. Okay, this is not a P2, this is a L2 norm. Uh, I think we can stop here because we have a, okay, I want to say some things here, then I will stop. Until now, everything that I talk here all the attacks in from the 2013 until to 2016 in the machine learning and deep learning completely based on the gradient attack, okay? Uh, but in the 2016, other researchers, they propose other type of attacks. They call J2BN based silencing map attack, uh, JSMA. Uh, this type of attacks not, um, not based on the gradient, is based on the uh, silency map attack, okay? Therefore, uh, next week, I will try to describe uh, about uh, what is the uh, JSMA, Jacobian sinus map attack in this case. There's some things not based on the gradient one and based on the saliency map. Uh, and then uh, also we will start to talk about some things about the, uh, how the attack can be affected to the uh, input. Okay, we will address some things here. And uh, here uh, we will uh, start to talk about one simple uh, defending a strategy against attacks, okay? That we know as a distillation and how the distillation works and why sometimes failed okay, and why it's not so secure always, okay? We will talk about this. Then we will talk about the uh, one of the uh, interesting type of attacks and also and also we know as a powerful attack that we know as a Carnegie and Wagner uh, attack, okay? And how the Carnegie Wagner attack works in this case. And then uh, we have other type of attacks that is proposed in 2019 that we know the BB attack, okay? And, and then, uh, I mean, that in 2019, uh, there is another type of attack that we know as a, uh, I mean, that as a norm attack. This works based on the norm attack uh, against a deep neural, uh, deep neural network. Uh, also, we know the type of attacks uh, as a DDN. Again, uh, we will address 